Hey yo, what's up? This your boy DeMarco, CEO of Try Spell and B. Check this out. I'm on the east side of Oklahoma City at Young Achievers Christian Academy, about to sit down and do an interview with a good friend of mine, Sharita Smith. Ms. Smith is the founder and principal of Young Achievers Christian Academy, and they're celebrating their 20th anniversary as a school this year. She was kind enough to sit down with me to do an interview to talk about her academy, the state of education in America, and some of her amazing community work. So y'all stay tuned and check out our interview and keep it locked. All right, peace. Hey, Y'all, what's up? It's your boy DeMarco, CEO of Trout Spelling Bee. I'm here with a good friend of mine. She's sitting here right now. She got me amazed at some of the things. She's been supporting me for so long. She brought up that I did the school's logo, and I'm just now realizing that I think that was the first logo that I ever designed, and she still uses it still to this uses day. Still uses it today. But before, I, before we get to talking, because you know me and you, we'll get to talking and forget the camera's on. Right. I just want to introduce her. This is the founder principal, teacher of Young Achievers Christian Academy, and they're celebrating their 20th year anniversary this year, and she has done so many amazing things in this Oklahoma City community with her outreach, with her education programs, and just many, many other things we'll discuss. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce everyone to my good friend, Ms. Sharita Smith. How you doing? Hi, I'm doing good, DeMarco. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm so glad that you sat down now, y'all. I'm going to tell you, she laughing because she do not do this. Do that, not. She, she said, I'm only doing this for you. And I, I was so happy that she took this interview because I want to just shine light on an amazing person. You have been to me, but not only me, this entire Oklahoma City community, 20 years. 20 years. 20 years, Young Achievers Christian Academy. And we, we was talking so much before the cameras came on. I'm like, we got to save someone for the interview. Yeah. But I just want to I just want to start first with saying, um, how does it feel? you know, to be in your 20th year of your academy? It, I almost have to pinch myself because it's one of those things to where it's like God has allowed me to constantly do this without stopping, without ceasing. COVID came. Being an entrepreneur, not getting a lot of funding from, you know, outside sources, it is really a God-given dream um, that he has position me in and I thank him for it uh, thanking him for allowing me to utilize this platform to meet people like you Absolutely. my parents my students uh, just to create an atmosphere uh, for young African-American kids and just not African-American kids kids in general to educate them and show them that they are capable of doing anything that they can possibly do um, they just need a little help. They Absolutely. just need a little push. Just like us as adults, we need a little push sometimes, but that's what we're here for. We're here to educate the kids, uh, give them a foundation, and make sure that, of course, we allow them to know who God is because that's the, that's the base, the foundation of the program. You know, so many schools have transitioned from private schools to charter schools um, for that reason, but for me, you know, I'll never do that because I want to make sure that that foundation of Christ is there for our kids. Absolutely. Uh, because most definitely they need it. Absolutely. And I can only imagine 20 years ago when you embarked on this journey of, you know, higher education for children in your community, you probably couldn't envision some of the things you've been able to accomplish. You're right. Because I tell people I did not want to be an educator. Wow. Education was not on my radar. Um, I wanted to go to school to be a speech pathologist. Okay. Uh, so with my minor being in English education, uh, I thought that I would go into, you know, the speech pathology program. And then I was led into teaching um, as a substitute and trying to, you know, just fill in my way right after graduation. And it's there that my superintendent at the time, uh, Dr. Betty Mason, um, and my principal at the time, they thought that I was just this amazing educator. And I thought, uh, but teachers don't make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Right. And so I did it for a while. And my next principal came along, uh, Mrs. Cheney, and they were like, you are a natural at this. And I'm like, okay. And so I started a summer camp program. And they helped me with that and my first summer program after the at the end of the summer parents were wanting to know how can they enroll their kids in school first thing i said was i i have a job like, right. i have a job there's this is not a school it's just a summer program and so 
that's where the door actually opened wow. um, was with that summer program. Um, and that first year, you know, I had 11 kids. Wow. So I homeschooled 11 kids my first year. Second year, I had 35. The third year, I think it was like 78. And then the numbers just grew from there. But I tell people it's nothing that I did for myself other than be obedient. Absolutely. I was obedient to God. And here we are 20 we years are. later. Absolutely. Now, we all know that education is a very, very serious subject in, you know, America. Yes. And, you know, with teachers being underpaid, undervalued, um, you mentioned being a substitute, you know, when you started out. Uh, I don't know if you've seen a clip recently where the substitute had fought a, yes. a, a student. And, you know, so it's just like it's a lot of things going on in these schools and these okay. communities that, you know, it's it's definitely a divide between teacher, student yes. and, you know, community. Um, what, what's some of your what's some of your thoughts on kind of the state of education in America and, you know, being one of those people who are advocate and, and you know, really campaigning for, you know, these kids to get the education like I, I know from being around you all your educators at your school, I can see how much they care about the right. students. My, my son has been in your summer program many years, and I just remember the relationship he formed with a lot of the teachers, and it felt like that he had extended moms, you know, right. when he came to yes. camp. He was a young man, and I felt comfortable dropping him off, and I knew that you and your staff really cared about the students. So when you see things like the substitute incident and you see, you know, teachers walking off and, you know, quitting their job because they're not getting paid enough, what do you think about those things? It's disheartening. Um, society and the world has changed, and, if you know, we're going to be honest. You know, things have changed. Uh, I tell my staff all the time, I talk to parents all the time, uh, parenting has changed. Absolutely. Um, and so the one thing that I most definitely try to get my parents to understand is that we are a village. Mm -hmm. It takes all of us doing our part in order to have a successful child, Absolutely. a successful student. Um, so we all have to be on the same page. So that means with the disciplinary, uh, you know, behavior, the homework, the the consistency, the the communication. We all have a job to do, and if we're not doing our job, if uh, one one person isn't d doing their job, then that means something is going to lack. Absolutely. And so I pr I I try to make sure that I make that an important thing when we do our orientation. I utilize a triangle, and you know if you do geometry, triangles have each side is is equal so if one side isn't doing their part then guess what that leaves that gap open it's it's most definitely disheartening to see the things that we're seeing in schools but a lot of it has to do with respect you know um and people may say okay you know we're not living in the night in 1945 1960 Respect is respect. Absolutely. And so you, t you teach students, you give respect, respect is given. Absolutely. Um, and so we make sure that, number one, we love on our students. We make sure we let our students know that, hey, this is a safe place for you. Absolutely. We love you. Um, we're here for you. But most definitely, this classroom is a classroom that is designed for learning, is designed for you to take your education to a whole nother level. And in order for us to do that, we have to have a cl classroom that's quiet, a classroom that's not chaotic, because your teacher can't teach. And Absolutely. your other, the students around you can't learn. Absolutely. And so I take pride that, you know, yes, we are a very structured school. Absolutely. Uh, most definitely a lot of you know, parents shun down on those type of things because, you know, everything is so hands-on, uh, learning with your hands, digital learning, and all, and all of those things are great. But how much learning is actually taking place Absolutely. in the classroom Absolutely. when we're when that's what our, our biggest focus is? Uh -huh. And so, you know, we have to get back, as I tell, you know, our parents and some of my staff, we have to get back to the basics. Uh -huh. We have to make sure that our students understand the difference between respect, you know, and our teachers. And so our teachers give our students the utmost respect. And as I tell the students, if our teachers is giving you the utmost respect and you in return should give that teacher Absolutely. that respect. But of course, we, we want to make ourselves uh, look good. We, you know, we're, we're putting, we're molding kids 
in our youth to go out in the communities and serve. Absolutely. And so we're molding them. We have to mold them in what we want them to go out there and do. That's true. So we have to give them those, chari th those characters, those uh, things, and we have to make sure that they're displaying those things when they go out in public. But it has to start somewhere. Absolutely. And so if it's not starting at home, then the next place for it to start is at the school. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So being a private academy, um, I remember growing up in uh, the public school, you know, community of Oklahoma, and we just lacked a lot of information. You know, I realized when I became, when I became grown that it was a lot of things that I should have learned in school that I didn't learn. And um, I took my son through private school uh, for his elementary education. Right. And I noticed the difference in a lot of things that, you know, he was able to learn early on that I didn't going to public schools. I wanted you to um, kind of basically, if you could, tell some of the advantages of having a private academy opposed to um, having a public school education uh, and going to private school because a lot of people may not know some of the benefits. They just think it's paying to go to school, right? That's what everyone Right. Thinks. Everybody just think it's paying to go to school. But me paying for private school for my son, I know that higher education right. is definitely um, okay. rendered at the private, you know, in private institutions because it's a more hands-on and personal experience. So I wanted you, you know, as a... Um, private academy owner to kind of talk about some of the benefits of a child coming to private school opposed to public schools. So for me, what I tell my parents is foundation is everything. Um, private school, yes, there you have great benefits from attending private school versus public school. Public school is great. I'm a product of public school Absolutely. from uh, preschool all the way up to graduation in my senior year in high school. Uh, but as I said earlier, times have changed, things have uh -huh. changed, um, and the educational system has changed. And everyone can afford private school, but as I tell parents, if you can, if you can make that sacrifice, uh, for some, some schools are expensive, some schools are not expensive. We try to make sure, or I try to make sure that this is affordable uh -huh. for an average family. Absolutely. Uh, but the, 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 the benefits, number one, is smaller classroom sizes. So you have smaller classroom sizes. Um, in our lower level grades, we have two teachers in a classroom versus one. Okay. Um, more structure. Um, classrooms are very structured. Discipline is most definitely one of our biggest uh, points that we like to talk to our parents about is that you know, we have a zero tolerance when it comes to behavior with our students in the classroom. Um, and then the academics. Um, we utilize uh, the Abeka Christian curriculum here at the school, and so does probably a lot of Christian private schools. Well, those, those programs are rigorous programs, and they gear the students to be two years ahead of a regular public school uh -huh. student. So typically when our students leave here, they're two years ahead of the game. Um, they're two years ahead of other students. We had um, one of our former students that just graduated um, this last year. She was our only freshman that we have had. Um, she made a 24, I believe, 22 or 24 on her ACT as a freshman. Wow. She had been here since second grade. And um, her state testing was off the chart testing in high school. But that's because we stay on the kids. A lot of schools don't do homework anymore. Wow. You know, homework is something that's obsolete. Uh, but I took a class at the beginning of the school year this year at Oral Roberts, and homework is important. And so those things that prepared us when we were going to, you know, in high school, getting ready for college, we're, we're, we're moving away from those things. Well, private schools tend to keep those foundations. Uh, a lot of parents say, well, you know, I send my kid to private school, so I'm paying for a grade. No, you're not paying for a grade. You're paying for the smaller classroom, the one-on-one -on -one that your right. kid can get. You're paying for that extra help that your kid can get in the classroom with that same teacher without having to pay for a tutor. You're paying for those things. You're paying for the structure of the classroom, you're paying for that classroom discipline. Absolutely. Um, you're paying for those things, and those things is what make 
a child evolve into the person that they're going to Absolutely. be. Absolutely. Yeah. So I know that you do a lot of community work with yes. outside of the school. Yes. I know uh, I, I know sometimes you sponsor kids to come to your summer program yes. and you have a, a you you serve on the board of my nonprofit charitable yes. board uh, give a little foundation she's a board member of my charity that's how far back we go um, but you do a lot of community work and I just wanted to have you give some advice to someone who may say we would love for our child to come to you know younger young achievers Christian Academy but quaint qu can't quite afford it, but we still want to seek that kind of higher level education desire in our child. We can't necessarily afford it. Would you have some advice for someone who may not be able to, to aff aff afford private school, but yet would like to give their kids, you know, some more education, some more opportunities outside of their public school education? So that's funny that you say that. So I still tutor kids that don't attend Young Achievers. Wow. And I do that out of the kindness of my heart because, again, I know some of the, I don't want to, I don't want to say disservice, um, but I know that the lack of there is mm -hmm. of some of the kids in some public schools. Mm -hmm. um, and I base that on where our kids are academically versus other students. And so I still give back in the community by tutoring those kids. So I take about 10 kids a year. I tutor those kids throughout the school year for free. That's amazing. My parents bring them to me. Uh, but there's always opportunities um, for you to bring your kid. Uh, we do set a number aside every year where we will do scholarships for certain okay. kids based on their background, based on the family circumstance and situation, uh, because there again, uh, my motto since I started this is I'm not I'm not in this business to get rich. Right. I'm in this business to service the kids. Absolutely. Um, and that is what I will continue to do. Whether or not, you know, I have a negative balance in my account because, again, the kids is what they, they, it, they're, to, they're tomorrow. They, they're, they are our future. Right. You know, and if we can't get them where they need to be, then where is the future? Right, that, that makes a lot of sense. And a lot of educators don't really get a, a platform to kind of explain their perspective yeah. unless something crazy, crazy. or drastic yes. happens, you know. But as an educator, seeing so many students, uh, so many generations of students come through your academy, what's some advice you could give the parents, you know, because we obviously, we can't see our kids when they at school. <laughs> and people always tell me, little Marco is a totally <laughs> different person when he's not around you. So what's some advice you could give the parents, you know, that could help probably bring that bridge, that gap in between student to teacher and when they come in um, to show respect, what, what's some things that parents could do? What's some advice you could give parents to help that experience of, you know, teach, that relationship of teacher and student The one thing that home. I would say is have an open mind. Um, don't go into something automatically assuming that your child is right. Mm -hmm. um, have an open mind uh, because, like you said, there's always two sides to every story. Um, and sometimes teachers don't always get it right. Absolutely. You know, teachers always don't get it right. We sometimes fail and we get things wrong. We perceive things we, we saw, we heard. We saw, but we didn't have all the details. Mm -hmm. But I do find that when parents have an open mind and ha are willing to sit down and listen and make sure that they've got, gathered all the information, that it brings about a better meetings. Absolutely. When, especially when you're talking about a, sti a, a situation that no one wants to talk about if you have to suspend a student, right. if you have to do this. Um, we try not to suspend kids, mm -hmm. you know, things have changed drastically with um, with education. Mm -hmm. We're probably one of the schools uh, that still does SWAT. <laughs> right and on. so, um, of course, parents have to sign a waiver for that. But as the years progress, we're noticing that more students are non-SWATters. And mm -hmm. that's that's fine. But that's when you let the parents know, hey, most definitely now, you have to be our support system. Absolutely. You, we, you have to be, we have to be on the same page. Absolutely. So we can't contradict each other. Absolutely. And so when kids see that, then that's when kids tend to play. 
Absolutely. the other side. Yeah, and kids are smart. And kids are smart. Listen, we have three-year-olds that <laughs> I, I'm like, really? <laughs> three-year-old. We have three-year-olds. And so you will be amazed of how smart these babies are mm -hmm. and they can decipher things. And so, but yeah, parents, I, I mean, like most definitely I encourage parents to have an open mind and don't come into a situation one-sided. And I'm going I'm I'm to just say it for you. Your kid ain't always right. Your kid. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they they bad most of the time. They ain't around you. So y'all better have some grace for these teachers, and y'all better make sure y'all taking care of y'all, handling y'all business at home so y'all kids don't be coming to these schools showing out for these folks. There but I, I heard you say that, you know, you started as a substitute, and it just kind of morphed into you having an I academy did. for 20 years. I like to use my platform to educate, and I know it's going to be some young educators. Somebody might be starting at the level of a substitute or might have a daycare or early child development center, and they may look at you and look at your story and say, hey, you know, one day I want to own my own academy, my own private academy, and not only own it, but 20 years in existence, that's, that's something to be proud of. What, what type of advice would you give to a young educator who's, you know, aspiring to be in a position that you're in? Don't waver. Don't waver. Um, if this is something that you truly believe in, uh, go into it st steadfast. Don't waver. Do your research. Uh, it's funny because I talk to a lot of people who um, are thinking about getting into the business, whether it's daycare, whether it's schools. I've talked to young men that want to start boarding schools for, mm -hmm. for young men. I'm, I'm open to give a blueprint of how I started. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 20 years ago, things were very different. Right. Uh, and so if it wasn't for the people who I had that I could go to and ask questions right. to make sure that I was doing everything correct, then I wouldn't be where I am today. And so I, in return, I do that same thing for people who are interested in this. You give them the good and the bad um, from, of, from both perspectives uh, because it's important. But if it's something that you truly believe in, I tell people education is something that I take serious. And so I do try to encourage people, don't go into it be because you think this is a quick way to make money. Oh, wow because you're doing the disservice right. for the kids because you're going into it wrong. Mm -hmm. You're doing this because you believe in what it is that you want to do to change a child's life Absolutely. because it's all about changing a child's life. Absolutely. You know, we've had kids to come in who doctors said that they wouldn't be able to speak or read or mm -hmm. do this and I tell the doctors, hey, but I know someone else who has a different report. Mm -hmm. And with that different report, we're going to do this for this kid. And the success stories uh, that I have from these kids, I have one of my students, he's in high school now. And so it, it's rewarding to have those relationships with my parents because they still communicate with me. They still keep me abreast of what's going on. I still attend all of these functions Absolutely. For, for kids. Um, that started here, that got their fine foundation from here. And so most definitely, if it's something that you truly believe in, in your heart, stay the course. Absolutely. Stay the course. Absolutely. So since I've, I've known you, I know how important family is to you. Not only is your student body your family, but I've had the pleasure of meeting your sons, Kyle yes. and Carl, and watching them grow. You yes. know, they went from baby boys <laughs> to grown men now, yeah. you know, doing amazing things. I wanted you to talk about, you know, I know that you lead with love and everything you do, but I also know how important your family is to you. And not only did you, you know, you have the school, but I've seen times where you've had, you know, other family members, children, you know, with you. And after your kids was grown <laughs> and out the house, you know, you got some babies that, you know what I'm saying, you're raising up still. And it's just like, I, I never see you not with, with children. Hey. And, and I know how important that, you know, that is to you and how important family is to you. So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit, bit about some of the principles and the morals that, you know, you, you, you developed and grew up on to get you to this point. And I know, you know, in the past you had I always mentioned your mother, how, mm -hmm. how, you know, special she was to your yeah. life, to me. And um, a lot of amazing things that, you know, you and your family has been able to accomplish, not only, you know, with the school, but together. So I just wanted you to talk a little bit more about how important family I, is to you. Family is real important. Um, when I started this adventure of the school, 
all I had was family. Mm -hmm. My aunt, Miss Lawrence, she wrote me my first $900 check mm. to, to pay rent. Uh, my grandmother, who's no longer with us, she, you know, I pulled her from home and she was the office secretary mm -hmm. who didn't know how to use a computer, so I bought her a typewriter. Right on. <laughs> uh, but hey, she got everything typed up, everything was in order. And um, my, my kids, my family, uh, they're be, they've been here from the beginning. Uh, my kids now, like you said, they're grown. They are both in college still. My sister, she's in school still. And so they're doing great things. Uh, my aunt, I have an aunt and a cousin that's, that works for me now. Uh, but the foundation, the love of family, uh, most definitely, is there because if you don't have family to, to depend on, you know, who do you have? Right. And so my family has believed in my vision for so long that it's nothing that they wouldn't do for me, for the school That's or for the kids. And so I thank them for that most definitely. Uh, they, they come in and they sweep floors, we clean the building. Uh, we've done a little bit of everything. My grandfather, my uncles, they've painted, they've laid I've carpet. Seen, I've seen a little bit of everybody in here, you know. <laughs> they've, they've done it all, part. playing yeah. their part. Yeah. And they do it because we are a close-knit family. Right. Uh, growing up, I grew up with my aunts and my uncles. Mm -hmm. And so my grandparents were an offset of my parents. Absolutely. That's like how most of us grew up, right. you know, in the early, well, the late mid-70s, early 80s. When I grew up, that's how we grew up. Uh, it, it, it was the village concept. Right. And I think that that's why I am the way that I am. I still believe in the village. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say that the village is no longer there. The village is still there. You just have to make sure you have the right people in your Ain't village. Ain't that it? Ain't you have that to make it. sure. Absolutely. And so my family is a large part of my village. One of my, my, one of my, middle, my middle school teacher uh, is part of our village. She's not related to us by blood but she, she's uh, her my mother took in her mother oh wow and we raised them she followed into the footsteps Absolutely. into education and she now works for, with me blessing. and so um, those things that your family your, those family morals those things that those foundations that your family lay for you most definitely come in full circle. Absolutely. And so for me, mine have come in full circle because honestly, if it wasn't for my family, I promise I don't know where we would be as a school right now because they most definitely hold it down. When my mother passed, my aunt closed her daycare. Wow. She said God told her to close her daycare. She closed her daycare and she came and worked for me. That's um, she, took, she took her sister's place. And so it's like God does, he's showing us that we're here for a purpose. We're here to serve. And so our family, most definitely, we, we are a spiritual family and we know the importance of it. And so those are the same things that I have distilled into my boys. Absolutely. They work for me still. Right on. I've been seeing them work <laughs> since they was younger, like my son's age. <laughs> They've been working yeah. since they were young. When they told me that they were too old to go to summer camp, I told them that's fine. Then you're old enough to work <laughs> summer camp. Absolutely. So go ahead and get a lesson plan. <laughs> but making sure that you lay that foundation. But it's good because, you know, we joke about it now and I always tell them, oh, I'm going to retire. And they both say, well, you can't retire until our kids go through the school. And I'm thinking, <laughs> wow. how do y'all, how long do you guys want me to do this? Yeah. And, and, <laughs> am I ready to be a grandma yet so <laughs> right. we can speed it up? <laughs> right. So it's one of those things. But, you know, family, most definitely, I appreciate my family um, on both my mom's side and my dad's side. They've been here. My grandfather's um, on my dad's side, uh, my uncle's my cousins like there I can pick up the phone and say hey I need this hey I'm putting on this event I need family to do x y and z x y and z and they're like okay yeah what's the date what's the time we need to be there so that's a blessing that's a blessing and I'm glad that I've got the pleasure of meeting your family your your children your your siblings your your sister and you know just some other uh members of your family I believe your auntie might have been my um son summer camp summer teacher camp, before yes. but I, I use my platform to give people their flowers like you that I've built relationships with in this community and we were kind of joking like no probably nobody probably even know we have a relationship <laughs> like we do but Miss Smith has been supporting me for as long as I knew her my son had came to her um 
summer camp one year uh, when he was probably one or two years yeah. old. Now he's about to be 14. So y'all y'all know how long yeah. back that was. So when I came, though, she just embraced me. She embraced my son. And I was doing entrepreneur endeavors back then. And it's just, we before the cameras came on, she had kind of caught me off guard. She said, you know, I still use the logo you did. Well, seven or eight years ago, it was literally the first logo I made. And that's just a <laughs> testament of her support. I told you guys that she sits on the board of my nonprofit charity organization. And that means a lot to me because she trusted me enough with my community outreach. And she, in, in days, you remember we used to do the camps? Yes. It would just be us. It you would know? just be us. And you would get off of work from a summer camp and come <laughs> help me organize and put up. And never, you used to tell me, that's why it's surprising <laughs> to have you on camera. Now you're like, nah, okay, DeMarco, I'm going to stop helping you tell somebody I'm helping There you go. She would not let me allow her, uh, anyone to know that she was helping, but she would help me so much. And I just appreciate you. And, you know, um, as our friendship has developed over the years, you have always been there to support me. And now, you know, I'm using my platform to give those people who have helped me get in the position I am their flowers. And I just wanted to tell you, thank you, you know, Most for not only for all what you do have you have done for me, but what have you, you have done for this community. Because a lot of the things that you do, no one would know you did because you won't talk about it, you know, but I've watched you, you know, being around you, I've watched you just give effortlessly to, you know, so many different causes. You know, you take care of these kids. We talking about the education side, but we're not talking about the ride home. We're not talking about <laughs> the, the food feeding them outside of lunch, you know, and just your dedication to, you know, this community and these children that come across your academy. I just want to commend you and salute you for 20 years of service to this community because we both know that being an entrepreneur is no easy task it's and for, easy for task. you to take on the task 20 years ago to say I'm gonna bring a academy to my community for kids that look like me that look like us um, I don't think that you get enough credit for that and I don't think a lot of people in our community understand that you're the only black owned private Christian Academy in Oklahoma City yes they right don't now. they mm -hmm. don't they don't understand how how much that means to our community to have this right in the heart of the east side of Oklahoma at, at their disposal. But if they don't know, they'll know now. They know now. So from you started pre-K three? Yes. Pre-K three to eighth, eighth grade, grade and we I don't know if you want to talk about what we was talking about <laughs> before the cameras came on, but you know, the division is just continuing to grow and I just wanted to let you know if you need anything from me and as I told you, we're going to come through and get some content for you for the 20th anniversary. And we're just going to continue to support you. And my daughter's about to start school. I'm ready. I need enrollment papers because <laughs> I'm ready for her to get in school because she's too smart for her own good already. And I know with her coming here, it'll just, just make her even that much more. It. Exactly. We'll but it. thank you, Miss Smith. I know you got to get back to teaching. Like, she does it all. She runs the school. She's the <laughs> principal. She teaches. She does it all. And she took the time out to give me some of her time to allow me to just say thank you. And I want to encourage anyone who has a, a elementary or school age child to consider if you if you can afford it uh, to, you know, come to Younger Christian, uh, Young Achievers Christian Academy, you know, because the kids will be not only, you know, well educated, but they will be loved and they will be nurtured in a way that our, our this generation of children need to be uh, nurtured. Most because definitely. as you said, it's just a new time and it's a new age that we're dealing with with these children and we have to adjust to the times and I just want to you know give you and your staff you, you guys you know um, credit for just taking on the task to say hey you know regardless you I heard you mention a lot of times it wasn't about the money and regardless of what what we're being paid we care about your yeah. we care about your children about and your you know um, having a, a three-year-old daughter and a 13 year old son that means a lot for me to know right. you know when they go to school that they're being taken care of and the people who are educating them really care so thank you guys as a whole for what you do and again if you need anything from me I just want you to give me a call and I got you but thank you and I'll let you get back to your day and hey, y'all make sure y'all check them out. Do y'all have a uh, social media? Young, we do. Young so Achievers you can Christian follow, Academy. You, can, you guys can follow us on Instagram. We have an Instagram at Young Achievers Christian Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to our website at youngachieversokc.org um, and follow us there. We do have a Facebook page, Young Achievers Christian Academy. I'm going to um, put them all on the screen yeah, for you, you too. Can, you can locate us that way, um, or you can give us a call here in the office at 405 424 one seven zero one. But before we leave, I want to say thank you, DeMarco. Okay. Most thank definitely, you. I would not have.
have done this for anyone else. <laughs> I appreciate um, it. Thank you. But I do want to say thank you because, again, I can remember meeting you so many years ago mm -hmm. and to see you evolve into the young man that you thank have you. evolved into. Um, it's amazing. Thank you. Um, I think I said that to you. I'm very proud of you. Uh, I know we're, I mean, I know I'm a little older, but very proud of what you're doing for Absolutely. the community. I appreciate it, it. What you're doing for individuals, even when it started with your, your logos and uh -huh. your youth boys organization, which I love to do that. Um, I'm, and I kind of miss it, you know. I, I do it, Tom. I, I, I'm like, I can, just looking at those young men, teaching them how to tie a tie, making sure that they have Absolutely. dress shirts on and all of those things, like, You've done some amazing things in the community you. yourself. I appreciate and it. So I know this is supposed to be about young <laughs> achievers. It's supposed to be about yeah. me. But most definitely, sometimes we have to remember, you know, and reflect on the things that we do Absolutely. for the community. And I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that because it means a lot coming from you. Like I said, you always supported me. And I just appreciate you giving me your time today. All right. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Hey, y'all. Y'all check it out and keep it locked. Thank you. Peace. I like to do hood rash with my friends.